this is basically how mass spectroscopy works and once again I'm not sure how much detail you're going to need to look at here but let's let's just give a quick overview and, and see if we can then uh, look at an output and start to, to pick the bits and pieces out of it. So what we need to do is we need to work on the, like we did with uh, NMR, we need to work on the fact that charged particles uh, create magnetic fields and uh, as they move and those magnetic fields can interact with other um, magnetic fields in order to experience different forces. Now we also have a relationship therefore where we can identify the force that acts on a charge moving through a magnetic field. It's a, it's a beautiful little uh, equation, uh, uh, particularly for those located anywhere near the city uh, around the Queen Victoria building. And basically this relationship, this mathematical relationship, uh, tells us that if we have a charged particle and it's moving at a certain velocity through an external magnetic field, it will experience a force. And because we also know that force is equal to mass times acceleration, and I'm sorry to dive off into physics for a while, um, therefore we know that the um, acceleration of a particular particle is going to be influenced by its mass that is it'll experience a greater acceleration if it has, has a lower mass assuming that the force uh, is the same so this is basically the mathematical principle upon which mass spectroscopy works what we need to do is we need to have particles that are charged first of all so molecules we know are uh, electrically neutral so therefore what we have to do is we have to basically um, hit them with uh, something that's going to give them a little bit of a charge if we fire protons into the nucleus or electrons into the uh, space around the nucleus we can perhaps uh, charge this particular particle and electrons of course are a better choice because they have so little mass they're not going to influence the um, overall mass of the substance too much um, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a charged particle that charged particle is going to then be accelerated so it'll move relatively quickly uh, through an electromagnet now that external electromagnet is going to exert a force and just as if we throw an object gravity is going to force it to um, back to earth but it doesn't make it drop instantaneously what it does is it follows a curved path before it hits the ground likewise the um, particles that we're looking at in our mass spectra are also going to be following a curved path and of course if they are uh, lighter particles they'll experience greater acceleration and therefore they'll fall um, fall if you like to call it that more quickly um, and that's why if we've got some sort of a detection apparatus we can get a sense of the mass of the particles in fact what we look at is the relationship between Q uh, and M, which is charge to mass and you can see the equations that I've written above just very simply if we can put those two together we do get a um, we can get a bit of a sense of what's happening uh, in terms of the charge to mass ratio this is kind of the principle charged particles will experience a force in a magnetic field you can use the palm rule to actually identify how they're experiencing that force um, and because the size of the force uh, is constant if the charge is the same that means that the um, acceleration is going to be directly proportional to the mass and it means that we can start to look at um, getting some output data on different masses that come through 